Welcome back. It is Pottery Day. That's a self-proclaimed day. We <laughs> proclaimed it. Pottery Day today. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Roger Morgan. I'm the founder and CEO of Pottery. And with us today, two fabulous guests. We have Brooke Sloat, our Director of Product Development. Welcome, Brooke. Thank you, Roger. Great to be here. And we have Dr. Sandy Willis, one of our veterinarians on our advisory council. Welcome, Dr. Sandy. Great. Hey, hi, everybody. Well, glad to be back. Oh, good. Glad to have you back. Uh, Dr. Sandy is up in the Washington area, Seattle, Washington area. Uh, Brooke and I are at, here at the home office uh, in the Dallas Fort Worth area. And we're excited today to talk about a topic that is very near and dear to, I think, all of our hearts who have pets. Um, but, you know, this is a topic of uh, anxiety with pets, um, but, you know, occasional aches and discomforts with pets. Um, so we are going to talk about that. Um, but before we do, and before we really uh, dive in and, and get to hear all of what's on Dr. Sandy's mind on that topic to, to help us, we're going to have a little fun first. Shall we have some fun? Let's Yay. do it. All right, let's have a little fun. We we've been so this this pottery day. This has been really fun. Um, and we've got uh, every hour on the hour. We're going live with a different topic, different guests, and it's been fabulous. And the turnout's been wonderful. The topic, the conversation's been wonderful. Um, and we've also been giving away uh, door prizes, basically a raffle or a drawing. So uh, really good ones, guys. Really good ones. It's good stuff. So let me share my screen here and show you what we're giving away, and we'll do a drawing here in just a second. Um, this, you know, we've got uh, beautiful blankets, beautiful beds. Um, if you, if your name is drawn, you can choose anything on this uh, site, our, our beds, our blankets. If you would prefer to choose bowls, some of our dog bowls, uh, you can choose two bowls or a blanket or a bed and they're beautiful. So you've got lots to choose from there. If your name is selected and, um, uh, and we're doing that drawing every hour on the hour at the top of the hour. So I'm going to uh, do, read the three names that were drawn. Um, and if you would like to be part of that drawing for the next hour, all you got to do is go on to, uh, to one of the Pottery websites, the replicated site, whoever invited you, go to their Pottery website and place an order. And you'll immediately be put in the drawing for the next uh, drawing at the top of the hour. The other way you can enter the drawing is to become a pet pro today. And if you do, your name will automatically go into the drawing. And uh, we draw every hour. And um, the number of names just keeps growing as more orders and more pet pros sign up. So the sooner you place your order or sign up as a pet pro, the more chances you have, I guess, as the day goes along for the drawing. But let me go to the, uh, the magician, Karen, who uh, has done the spinning and or the drawing. And the winners, we've got three new winners um, uh, for today's drawing are, Faith, oh, this right now is drawing, Faith Corey from Illinois, Yay. Chris Hansen from Utah, Yay. and Maggie uh, Rent, Rent, Rentges, I, I may have mispronounced that, Maggie, but from Florida. Yay. And all three of you will receive an email with instructions on how you can claim your prizes. Um, but congratulations, you guys, those are wonderful prizes. I know I personally have multiple of, those, uh, of all of those dog beds, uh, <laughs> bowls, and blankets at our house, and they're beautiful, they're luxurious, and they really help us pamper our pets. So with that, all right, um, I've got, uh, I guess I have one more uh, treat to share um, to tee up this topic today, and this is a brand new video, never been aired before. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to share actually two videos while we're on this live today, at least two, maybe more. Uh, but at least two, um, and the first one, uh, both of these have never been aired before, so you are going to be the first to ever see these videos, and I think um, this first one will really tee up nicely the topic of pet anxiety and how this really is a, 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 an issue that um, many pets deal with. So I'm going to go here, share my screen, and go to our Potra YouTube page, and I'm going to select this video here. Anxiety is a real problem for all pets, cats and dogs. About one in three of them are affected. It may be so mild that they're just sitting there trembling in their little fur and drooling a lot. 
It can lead to the other extent where they're damaging themselves and things in the home. Some of the most common things that cause anxiety in our pets are thunderstorms, fireworks, loud noises, actually going to the vet or the groomer, or even separation anxiety. There are a lot of ways to treat anxiety. It may be coming to someone such as myself and getting a prescription medication. But if it's mild or maybe you're a pet parent that doesn't want your pet to be on medication all the time, there are safe, effective alternatives. Pottery's Chillax contains healthy, natural ingredients formulated at the right levels that work synergistically to help keep your pet calm. It has ingredients like hemp seed oil and hemp seed powder, passion flower, chamomile, and ginger, which help reduce anxiety, alleviate nausea, and promote relaxation. They can just chill out while we have tons of family over and they aren't as stressed out as they used to be and just meowing and going crazy. And I wouldn't see my cat AJ for three days afterwards. And so now with the Chillax, it's just been life changing for them because they can just come out and they're normal. Paw Trees Chillax is safe, it's effective. You can give it to your pet every day if you need something to calm your pet naturally. <laughs> There you have it. That's good. Brand new video. So yeah, that's an exciting, it's a fun one that really, you know, it's a short video that really tees up a, a serious issue. I know we have two dogs and one of our two dogs absolutely deals with this. So Brooke, I'll turn it over to you and we can really tap into the wisdom of Dr. Sandy and all that uh, she can help all of our guests out there in Facebook land. Uh, learn yeah, that, topic. that sounds great. Um, are you, I'm, I'm seeing the, there you go. There I was just Okay, right, sorry, I wanted to see Sandy's beautiful face. Okay, so let's talk about anxiety. Um, we're often asked if anxiety truly is a thing for pets. Um, so is it, and what are the signs that a pet parent might see um, to determine if their pet is anxious? You know, uh, absolutely it exists in our, our pets. Um, cats and dogs, I mean, I'm sure I'm a cat person. That's the only pet I've ever had. Love dogs. Work. There's dogs at work here. People know their animals. Um, and we even show signs of anxiety a little bit differently as well, too. Some of us are cool, calm, and collected, but hide anxiety. And I, I think a lot of pets could potentially do that. And we've talked earlier about separation anxiety in dogs where they can actually chew through a house, a door, just, just massively destroy things, very obvious. But you got pet parents, you know your, your pets and, and a cat could hide more. Um, I've been home a little bit more. My cats all sleep together. I have three of them. They're, they're fighting a little bit. I think, and I and I, I work from home and I'm on the phone, so I let them sleep, but I think that's a little bit of a sign that they're a little bit anxious. Um, it may be not eating as well, maybe over grooming. Cats tend to like excessively groom a little bit if they're anxious. Um, you know your pets. And th we've talked about in the profession how wonderful it is during this really challenging time that people are adopting pets. You're spending a lot of time with your pets. I love that we have such a bond with them. But they feel off of us, too. I know my pets probably are most anxious when I'm concerned about something and I walk around the house talking to myself about it. And they don't know who this COVID person is, but they really want me to quit talk having them in my life. So... <laughs> they they do and and you, sometimes you recognize it or you don't. That's why when you finally address it with something like a chillax, that, that supplement, it's just amazing that you can really see the difference. You know, I think we just don't recognize it until we we give a pet something that's calming, or we calm down, or the situation calms down. So yeah, it's a hidden thing. Yeah, they, they pick up a lot, you know, with with COVID-19, you know, a lot of people are anxious. A lot of people are out of work. A lot of, you know, there's just a lot going on. Kids are home. You're home. It's a whole different world for your pets. They're used to you all leaving and them having the house, right? And so it's it's just a very different time. So, so Sandy, um, you mentioned separation anxiety. So like when someone, like when you go off to work, and, and leave them during the day and they want to be with you. But what are some of the other triggers um, for a, a pet to be anxious? 
Oh, like Dr. Tony <laughs> mentioned all kinds of different things. Um, pets don't, and neither do people like change. So anything changing in, in the environment. Um, then it could be noise. I mean, everybody knows that no, noise phobias around particular times of year, it's noisy. My cats don't mind fireworks. Some animals, it, it, it's a lot. Having people over at the house, I mean, the pet pros, I think they were just interviewed. Anybody coming to the house, that'll trigger that. Um, um, yeah, any change, it changes whatsoever. Going to the veterinarian, um, we've talked earlier about cats don't like to come to the veterinarian and there's a movement to really make it, you know, less stressful for cats to come to the veterinarian. Um, at this time where we're doing a lot of curbside stuff at the veterinarian, some people are mentioning that's actually working better because animals get to spend the time in the car and then they just come in and come back. It, it's, but it, it can be really multifactorial and it can be just simple as a simple change in routine. Okay, excellent. Um, so what, what can pet parents do? I mean, I, I, you know, of course you had mentioned chillax, you know, certainly it, they can give a supplement, but what are some of the other things um, that, that are out there that, that you've heard about or, you know, that a pet parent might want to look into? Well, there's, I mean, we talked earlier about the fact that, and you mentioned that with uh, separation and diet, it can get really severe. And um, one of the number one things we see as veterinarians are behavior problems. And so uh, a lot of general um, GPs, I, I'm a specialist in internal medicine, but we see behavior problems a lot. And there are medications that we can give for severe separation anxiety. Some of them are similar to what we take, but a lot part of it is, is working with the pet to, to help them. I mean, for separation anxiety, that's behavior modification, where an owner actually works with a pet to start out leaving gradually for short periods of time, coming back, rewarding the pet. Because behavior is not all just about giving medications. And in human, there's anti-anxiety drugs, but it's trying to reduce anxiety in your life. So there's behavior modification. Um, there's activities to do with pets. Um, a lot of work been done on um, like thunder jackets and things like that, that people, you know, like squeeze, shoot, you know, kind of the pets feel safe in sort of things like that. So there's some over the counter things that, that, that people can do. And if it is serious, contact the veterinarian because they may bring in a behavior specialist yeah. because, again, it, it's, um, it can be really challenging, a bad behavior problem really needs to see a specialist. But on the other hand, just simple anxiety to relax them a little bit is where like a supplementation like Chillax would come in just to calm them down. I think most people can realize when it's a significant problem. Um, and then other things like loud noises, putting the pet in a quiet area. When people come over, putting them in a quiet area where um, back room, maybe having some music on, their favorite blanket. That's simple things to, if you can, to avoid the difficult situation. Um, my cats are very friendly, outgoing, but they're not used to being having people at the house. So I always give them an out, A, because I don't want to give them an out to the outside. <laughs> but when people come over, they, you know, just calming area, safe place, those kind of things. So I've gone from like extreme to the behaviors to the supplements like Chillax to just making the environment less stressful. Is trying you know, to avoid that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think, I think that's really wonderful. Um, a lot of times I know this works for puppies and I, um, I I've seen this actually with my personal dogs, but um, uh, if you leave them a, a, some clothing, so a, a shirt that you've worn or something so that they have something of yours with them, um, that could be very comforting. I know when bringing a puppy home, if you rub a blanket or a towel on their mom or their siblings, they have that comfort, you know, when they're in a strange you know, new home. Um, people have also asked a lot about um, oils and pheromones and diffusers and things like that. And the, 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 the thing that I'm finding that I'm hearing is that, you know, those, those can work certainly, but you have to have that pet in that room with, with the diffuser. If the pet leaves the room, the diffuser is not going to work, right? Because the, the, the pet's not going to be, be, you know, breathing, breathing it in. But okay. So let's talk a little bit. You mentioned about, um, again, chillax and, and that it's a, you know, natural supplement that would help. Um, 
can you tell us, you know, why why would chillax be helpful? And I think it, you know, basically focusing a little bit on the ingredients. Well, yeah, the the ingredients that that, that um, and that Tony listed them off um, are just an amazing. I mean, these these natural supplements with these amazing ingredients, the hemp oil, the hemp seed. What else do we have in here? Passion flower, uh, chamomile and ginger. These just sound calming because we know because sometimes um, and, and we take the same thing. L-tryptophan, I mean, increases uh, levels of serotonin, helps prevent, um, promotes our relaxation. I think it's a component that's in Turkey. That's why a lot of times we get kind of sleepy after right. things. After Thanksgiving, yeah, after a turkey um, meal. Yeah. And we talked yeah. about mel melatonin. I mean, um, in, in, so th the ingredients are just a great combination of natural supplements that are used, are calming in teas and other sources th that we get. Um, and, you know, my approach would be, um, and, and you mentioned the diffusers and things, to, to try things that, that are simple. Sometimes those work. I mean, when cats get kind of pissy at each other, pardon the pun, but urinary problems is what we're talking about. <laughs> it, it can be a challenging. I think the diffusers help somewhat. I've always maintained they make me feel better, and then I just don't care about my pet's problems. But if, if <laughs> Putting the pets in an environment that's comfortable for them with the, with the socks, uh, beds, the music is still is still not a, enough. Um, and you don't have to wait for a grandiose thing. Is if the Chillax really allows them to be less stressful, and I think an owner can really feel that. It, it just, besides the fact that just to have a calm, relaxing, maybe a little sleepy period during the day when you have friends over and things like that just really makes a lot of sense. I mean, people will get a sense, I'm pretty sure when it's really serious and overt destruction, but you brought up a point, Brooke, that sometimes we don't know our pets are stressed. And, and it, it's, I mean, they're great, can be tried on a pet even you're not sure if they're stressed. And if they really feel a lot calmer about the situation, you just figured out by trying chillax that they were stressed. And, it, and yeah. sometimes we Try things in veterinary medicine. We we can't prove it, but we try something and it really works well. Then we have our answer. Yeah, you know, people have asked why we use um, why we've added uh, chamomile and ginger, and um, so I just you know those are great to alleviate nausea. And when pets are stressed, they do sometimes become nauseous and then other things, you know, can certainly happen. So, um, but I just want to make sure that people listening could, you know, understand why those ingredients were so important. So, so yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. That's yeah. the nausea component is, is really important. And that, that makes pets not feel very well, but yeah, that's another, yeah. The ginger is used for, for, for that um, yeah. quite frequently. Yeah. It, it, Exactly. I've traveled a bit in the past and people recommend taking ginger. Yes, yeah. no, absolutely. Yeah. So, so there's lots of occasions when a pet would have anxiety. You've named off, you know, and, and between the video and you, you know, we've named off a lot of different occasions why a pet would need um, something to just help them where they would be anxious and, and would need something to help them feel less um less anxious. And um, we're, we're getting rave reviews. I'm, I'm, I'm watching the comments about how Chillax works. Um, mm -hmm. I'd like to change gears for a moment and talk yeah. about uh, when pets... Oh, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Just before you switch, I saw a question on this topic of uh, separation anxiety. Could I just interject with that really quickly? Yeah. Sure. Okay. I uh, love questions. Yeah. All right. So here we go. Uh, this is Zoe said uh, she's got the great Dane. I think she was on a previous se segment with us. Uh, she said, my Dane has separation anxiety. When we leave, even for 15 minutes, she pees. When we are home, she never has a problem. She can hold it for more than eight hours. We've tried crating her and she will pee in the crate. Any suggestions? Yes. Yeah, so that separation anxiety is, it, it, it's a huge thing. Um, and you know, leaving for, and they may certainly want to talk to their veterinarian because I, again, I'm, I'm an internal medicine, so I have different expertise, which makes your advisory panel really great. But, um, but trying to leave for short periods, and maybe it's even shorter than that, and then really reward them, you know, with pets, could be a treat, <laughs> supplements that we have, um, is just to reward them. And maybe that's just, you go out the door, and you come back in 
and then you do that a few times and then you try to get it longer and longer and see if that works so that they they and the reward is you the owner is the reward is your hugs and kisses and you um, um and then beyond that that would just be a simple suggestion is try to do that would but contact your veterinarian because this is something that your general practitioners see a whole lot yeah yeah yeah, because I mean, the, 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 the thing you want to rule out, I mean, it, it sounds very much like the pet is is anxious, but you just want to make sure that there's no other issue because of the, the urine, you know, the urine yeah. issue. Yeah, and I was focused because it most urinary <laughs> tract things wouldn't be, yeah, if they held their urine for eight hours, but you're right. I mean, anything like that, behind any medical thing, I mean, behavioral thing, we want to make sure that medically everything's okay. And it could be that that probably is behavioral, but maybe that's that's the way that pet is, is um, you know, showing a urinary tract problem. I think if they were drinking a lot and urinating a lot, that you would see more of that during the day. And a lot of times urination is kind of submissive sort of thing, or, or it can be excitement. So there are other aspects of that beyond maybe the separation anxiety that maybe somebody else other than me would be able to trigger on. And, and with, on with, se with separation anxiety, I mean, the main thing is, so, the, you know, they tear up something. I mean, I know you come home, you're upset, but they're not doing it on purpose. They just want to be with you. So if they tear up a door, they're going to the door that they last saw you go out of because they're trying to get to you. So they're not trying to, do, you know, they're, they're not, doing this in, in, in a mean, malicious way. They're just doing it because they want to be with you. It's that bond. Yeah. It's actually absolutely that. And then the idea behind gradually increasing the time you're away and rewarding them is making them feel that you are coming back. Yes, um, that's key. And that you're coming back and you're going to get lots of love. And if you're, and really it's, it's and, and there's things with just jingling the keys and not going out the door or you go out the door and come back in, it's gradually, so the doggy gets the sense that yes, mom or dad's coming back. And the, and even if it's a little long, they're still coming back, hopefully you come back. And so, um, but to do, to do that, but sometimes they're just so panicked that, you know, and it could be as something as simple as the supplements and shellac or something else to help, help supplement that a little bit. Yeah, it's for an event an event-based thing. So I, I, I know that we wanted to also talk about, um, about aches and discomfort. Um, so, you know, when, when pets are feeling a little bit off, so let's go ahead and change gears to that. Cause I think Roger, you wanted to show a video on our aches away. Yes. Let me do it. I'll cue that up. And by the way, I saw Alicia, your question about bladder crystals. I would invite you to come back at 5 PM central. We'll have uh, Dr. Bernadine Cruz on at that time to talk about bladder issues and hairball problems and certainly ask that question then. Um, but let me now share my screen and we are going to look at another uh, video. This is also the first time we've showed this video. Go back here to our uh, wonderful YouTube page and I'm looking for our aches away. Let's watch this one together. <laughs> Pets can have aches and discomfort from doing things just in their normal life. Jumping, playing, even cold weather can make them achy. Limping and moving slowly are telltale signs of this. They also experience aches and discomforts from minor surgical procedures and even dentals. There are medications that you can use, but like any medication, they can have potential side effects. And there are times when you need something and you just don't have it on hand. There are times when you may not want to use a medication, pain medication from your veterinarian. You want to use something that's natural, something that's an alternative to those medications. Paw Trees, Aches Away is a great one. It's also less expensive. Paw Trees, Aches Away contains healthy, all natural ingredients which help to manage your pet's discomfort. It has ingredients like glucosamine, hemp seed oil, and hemp seed powder, and a blend of omega-3, 6, and 9s. All of these have an anti-inflammatory effect and help to reduce your pet's discomfort. And if we take him on a long walk, a long hike, he's definitely feeling it the next day. And so the Aches Away is the perfect product. It's all natural. It's a chew. It's fantastic. He loves the taste of it. And it just helps him feel so much better and just relieves that discomfort that he's in. Paw Tree's Aches Away is a natural supplement. It's safe enough that if you needed to, you could give it every day. I think that every pet parent should have it in their medicine cabinet. OK. 
Okay. Excellent. So, so we're talking about aches away and basically, um, you know, this is something that you, you, you could use every day, but it's something that it, that you don't need to use every day, but you should want to have this handy. I'm going to give you just a, a real quick story. Um, my dog at, it was a, ten, a little after 10 o'clock at night. I'm telling the girls, let's go outside um, to go potty. And then we're, you know, going to go to bed. Um, they normally all come, especially when I open the door. Um, Maggie didn't come. She's on the couch. She's not jumping off the couch. She's looking at me, you know, and she won't jump. So finally, I'm like, come on, Maggie. So I go and I get her and I put her down. And then she starts moving very slowly. She's not feeling very well, okay, at all. And so I'm thinking, I look at the clock. I said, it's after 10 o'clock. I'm going to have to go to the emergency vet. And then I remembered I had some aches away. This was right before we launched it. And I had some in my home. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to try this. In the meantime, I had already gotten myself ready for bed. So I went to go get dressed and uh, I gave it to her. Within 10 minutes, she was fine. She was walking normally, acting fine. So, you know, I took her to bed. Everything was fine. And then the next morning, of course, when we wake up, I'm checking because then I'm going to take her to the to the vet's office. And she was 100 percent. So you know, it, it, for me, it was the difference. Cause you know, if I took her to the vet, to the emergency place, no less than what, two, three, at least hundred dollars, you know, for testing and things like that. And then I just gave her one aches away. I mean, it was so well worth it. Right. So it's something that you kind of want to always have on hand. Um, when are some of the times that you might see a pet have an issue, you know, with this, what are some of the things that they might be doing that, you know, might cause an issue? It's interesting, Brooke, you brought it up because your doggy was just on the couch. So it was just like, well, what was going on with that? But maybe, maybe, you know, in some activity before then. And, you know, it, it's the same, like when we go out for a walk or something and maybe things feel a little off, we're not going to run down to the emergency clinic. Um, no, if we couldn't stand on it, that would be different. But no, I mean, we were talking about, in, you know, in light of everybody being home, is dogs are getting so much more, more walked. And just to be a little bit of sore, um, you know, dogs have similar orthopedic stuff that, that we do, but they can get a little sore, especially when they get older. You saw that that beagle walking along, but just feeling a little off, maybe a little tweak in the back or, or you know, it's usually maybe the hips or, you know, and a lot of dogs are prone to osteoarthritis in the hip, but anything where they had increased activity, getting off the couch, jumping up on the, the bed, those kinds of situations, going for more walks. Memorial Day weekend, you're going to go out because you've been home for a long time. So just a, a longer walk. It's not that there's an orthopedic problem. And again, it's distinguishing what's really so Anybody can go to the veterinarian if they're anxious about their dog. But for you, it was late. Why don't we try with the glucosamines, the hemp oil, hemp seed powder, um, the omega-3, 6s, and 9, the essential fatty acids. Let's just do something that makes sense, and then let's let the doggy not move for a while, relax, and just and just see if it, it works. Because that quick recovery like that, you know, that, that just makes perfect sense. I mean, those are all good ingredients that we know are so important to, to joint health. Um, you know, and it, 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 yeah. it's interesting. Thing because um, the thing that we do at Paw Tree is we do, you know, we, we use incredible ingredients, but we, in addition to the ingredients that you listed off, the hemp seed oil powder, et cetera, um, we use a blend of herbs and herbs also are so helpful to alleviate pain and soreness and things like that. So we, 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 we put the two things together and it really works so well. And chillax, or excuse me, aches away can be used for, as well as chillax for both dogs and cats. Um, so just in general, what would you say would be the main takeaway for pet parents um, with regard to like a, a, an aches away product? I think the, ma the main takeaway, and, and you mentioned, I just want to say in cats too, we're really looking at arthritis, really cats, we, they're so light that yeah, it's, it's weight. And we talked about it earlier, weight was a significant problem when you have joint aches and cats are so small, but arthritis is really a, a significant problem in them. And I think the the main takeaway is, you know, I would always say if you're in a panic, if your pet really seems in discomfort and really painful, 
I don't want to discourage anybody if they're concerned having their veterinarian take a look at them, but just realize that pets are a lot like us. They have little aches and, and pains. And um, if you know your pet and you feel comfortable, these are great products. We use um, a lot of these products ourselves. It's really neat that the, the supplements like Aches Away are, like you mentioned, are just so, it's kind of a holistic approach that what would be used in the treatment of more significant joint disease. And so these are things that you recognize that your pet may have a problem. And then I would encourage if they're just a little offer, I would try it on your dog goes out for a long walk, see how they recover maybe a little bit faster with this. So it's not for every day, but there may be situations that you don't know your dog's a little uncomfortable because they're just kind of bucking it up. Depends on the dog breed. But it's just the idea that that we can very simply with great products, maybe take care of some of the simple problems that pets have um, and make them more comfortable. Yeah, and I mean, if you have to respond, then yeah, please, anytime call the veterinarian. Yeah, I, I kind of, always, always. And I, I kind of liken it to, you know, if I have a headache, I, you know, I, I don't take um, aspirin or I don't take ibuprofen every day, but I have it on hand to, you know, to use it. And this is one of those on hand medicine cabinet type things that, that you want to have around. Um, so it's not something, as I said, you could give it every day if you wanted to. It's safe to do, but you don't need to. Um, if there are a lot of times what I've been hearing people doing is when they have uh, their pets have had some surgical procedures or wh whatever, where they have been put on some medication. This is a nice supplement so they don't have to be on so much medication. And, and, you know, you know. Pain, pain. it's interesting pain treatment of pain in veterinary medicine has expanded since I became a veterinarian. I mean, amazingly over the top and, you know, cats are not able to handle narcotics. We have to be really careful with that, but we've really expanded it so that even routine spays and neuters and simple things, they, they are treated with pain. And this is a natural progression after that. I think everybody sitting in today is going to hear about so many different products that Pawtree makes supplements that are going to be great to have on hand. And for, for just these everyday conditions that come up. And it just, it makes it, like you said, Brooke, it, for us, we don't go running in. I have a bad knee. Eventually I'm going to have to have something done on that. But if I tweak it slightly, you know, I, I do a little physical therapy and then I, you know, I take a little, you know, non or things like that. It just, that makes common sense. But there, yeah, there's so many so that we're able to keep the pet, not stress them out and just handle and make their quality of life a little bit better for just the everyday things that go on. Yeah. And, and another, another example, um, Nancy wrote in that Bela and Sapphire play so hard that some days they get an aches of weight shoe uh, with their, along with their joint support plus, which they get every night on those days that they play extra hard and extra rough. And whether it's with each other, whether it's your pet with you or their, two-legged siblings, your kids. I mean, it's, you know, when they roughhouse, sometimes someone could hurt a little bit. So, so thank you. I think, I think this gives us a really good idea about how to use aches away and what it, you know, what it, it's actually for. Brooke, there's a question here that uh, this may be uh, able to answer this for both aches away and chillax, but Katrin writes in, is it better to give your pet um, in the morning or at night? What, aches away or chillax? I think we could answer for both. Either? Um, I, I, I can tell I, you from... I, yeah, but go ahead. Yeah, um, I mean, it, it's really when the event... It, it, it doesn't... It, it does not matter, okay? It's when the event happens. So for when you're talking about chillax, if there's a storm coming in and it's 6 a.m., I'm giving my pet chillax, you know, then. It's when the event is happening, regardless of time of day. And that doesn't matter. And aches away, it, you'd be giving that when the pet is having some sort of a, you know, painful situation. Do, do you agree, Sandy, with that? Yeah, it, it would depend on, you know, kind of the half-life or how long the ingredients are around. But I, I agree. I totally agree. As I think a little bit ahead of time, a stressful event with the chillax, if, if you can do that, sometimes you just don't. And then, yeah, I I, I, I don't know if it's kind of a preventative. I mean, um, with the uh, aches away, it would be more when they're having the problem for to get maximum effect. And you indicate with your dog, it aches away. I mean, that that was, yeah, it took effect pretty immediately sort of situation. So you sure. want 
the maximum effect and things can be absorbed really quickly in the GI tract to be when the pet's in maximal discomfort. It's kind of experimenting with it a little bit, but I totally agree that that would be the thing to do. Yeah, that, that's very same dog that I have has the same instant, you know, relatively within 10, 15 minutes with um, with um, allergy support. It's the same type of thing. So, you know, maybe it's just her um, with regard to the chillax. If you if you can get it, get that into their system, we say on the bottle 30 minutes in advance. Sometimes if you have really stressed pets, I would do even longer. I would do an hour to two hours. You want it in their system. When they get that anxious, they start pacing and panting and drooling and you're not going to get them to eat anything. Okay. Cause they don't feel well. They start getting nauseous. They just want to escape. And so um, it's better to get it in them sooner than later. And then you can give more chillax. You, you know, you can give more than one over the course of a 24 hour period. So it's, it's so safe to use and it really, really works. I'm, I'm reading a lot of the, the comments that are coming in and it's amazing the comments that are coming in. You know, yeah, that the way. personal experience for people because, I mean, you learn about how these supplements work on your own pet. So, you know, how soon before something happens, um, you're right, because you're trying to to have with the chillax be calm when something comes along. So you play with it a little bit to see, so you know your own pet and given that they're really safe. Um, maybe you end up taking your dog for a walk and you know that they start slowing. You're not trying to really get them slow down their walk, but you know that like a half an hour into it, they're starting. So you, you can you can play around with these to see what's best for your pet. I mean, like yeah. you said, they're, they're very safe and just depends on what situations you have. You, Brooke, you're really good with the dog thing because I having the cats, you know, they chase each other occasionally. And um, and it's, you know, I'm not really seeing them be lame, but sometimes they go crazy. You know how cats are. It's like five seconds of insanity. And then it's just like, wow, how does everybody feel after that? And so that might be a time when they slow down a little bit. I mean, you, you just learn your own pet to see. And then the proof is, and that's why you, you want people to try these supplements. Proof, we can tell you all about them, but to see really how your, your dog or cat does, that's what the people calling in to share. This is what's amazing because word of mouth and, and your own testimonial is, is worth everything. Well, that, that's a really good point because try, you need to try these things and there's no risk. I'm going to, Roger, why don't you talk about this? There, there's no risk to trying anything. It's a great, it's a great close. And, and I, I'll thank you, Brooke. I, you know, one of the things is the founder of the company that I feel so strongly about is the uncompromising approach that we take to every product we develop and launch. We're just uncompromising, meaning uncompromising in the quality, in the ingredients we choose, the source of those ingredients, the manufacturing partners, the formulations. We make products that work, period. And if it's not going to work and deliver real, meaningful, lasting you know, results for a pet, and we don't have any interest putting it in our, our pottery brand. And so I can, I can commit to you that as the founder of the company. And, um, and, and I do that not just with my words, but with my actions. And that is with our 100% satisfaction guarantee. And Dr. Sandy, I'm so glad that you mentioned that because, you know, it really is, you know, seeing is, is believing and putting this into action by, you know, if, if you've watched this uh, live today and you have a pet with any of these issues we've talked about, you know, the, 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 go try our products. It's just that simple. Go try the products and see for yourself. And the, the great news is if they work, which I'm confident they will, you will have a lifetime of wonderful benefit that you'll provide your pet and yourself. And if they don't work, which I'm sure that that, that won't be the case, but if they don't work, we'll give you all your money back. So there's literally no risk and the upside is wonderful and the downside is is uh, zero downside. So I do hope that you will uh, take action and uh, try these products. And by the way, as I mentioned at the beginning of this particular session, we are, this is Pottery Day. So every hour on the hour, we have another session. And as we uh, enjoy hearing from different guests at the top of the hour, each time we will do a drawing for a free bed, blankets, uh, dog bowls, uh, uh, th these are wonderful, beautiful uh, gifts, prizes, and to be eligible, all you need to do is go on to uh, to, to Pottery, um, go to the replicated site of the person 
who share this event with you and buy something. And when you place an order today, you automatically go in the drawing for the rest of the day. And uh, the other way you can get in that drawing is to become a pet pro uh, and you'll be automatically entered into the drawing as well if you become a pet pro today. So with that in mind, um, I know this has been wonderful, Dr. Sandy, to have you on. Uh, for those of you who have not gotten enough of Dr. Sandy, which I, I know I have not gotten enough of Dr. Sandy. I don't think we ever will, but we will have Dr. Sandy back at 7 p.m. Central. And we are going to talk about pet food seasonings uh, with Dr. Sandy. And uh, in the meantime, it is 20 minutes away from our next guest. And I'll announce that now at 3 p.m. Central, we will have uh, Dr. Tony Kramer back on. Uh, and he will be helping us talk about digestive health. That's an absolutely hot topic for all pet parents. Uh, the GI tract is, is uh, one of the most common reasons that people take their pets in to see the vet. We're going to hear some great advice. Um, we have another, uh, um, some, some uh, video to share and uh, we'll do some more drawings. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So- And I, I wanna add just one thing. I'm sorry, Roger. Um, <laughs> I have one uh, yeah. yeah, I've been, I've been looking at the comments for those people who are, you know, not 100% sure, I don't know if I wanna try this even with 100% satisfaction guarantee. Don't take our word for it. Read the comments. Re watch this again. Read the comments. These people are writing in on their own. They've tried it. They love it. Um, and uh, someone also brought up something which um, I forgot to mention, which is very important. I learned this myself. Nail trims. Chillax works for nail trims really, really well. Okay. <laughs> and um, yeah, and someone wrote that in and I, I just wanted to make sure that people uh, think about that. I'm sorry, Sandy, you had one more point. No, that's a good point. Cause I was gonna mention with Aches Away is, is um, and Dr. Danny McFetry, who does the work that she did with Lap of Love is sometimes dogs get really arthritic in their very older age. And we start really looking at quality of life. And, and anything, it, it's a lot of times with mobility kind of things. And so there's way, you know, we got pain meds and stuff like that, but something like Aches Away, again, it just, to people don't realize how achy animals can be sometimes. So we talked about the overactive dog, but later in life when they're really slowing down, that these supplements are really worth trying because you just, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, these dogs are getting older. They can't do very much, but if they feel comfortable, we feel a lot better. And sometimes people don't want to go to the vet, don't want to do it. All right, let's just, just try something. So I just want to put that comment in and then you threw in the nail trim. So we got it. And I'm excited to come back and talk about um, pod pairings. Um, yeah. My favorite topic is, is appetites and stuff like that. So I'm excited. <laughs> All well, right. Well, thank you both. Uh, Brooke, Dr. Sandy, appreciate you being on. And uh, for everybody out there, we appreciate you viewing and being part of Pottery Day. We'll see you back here at 3 p.m. Central for our next Featured guest, Dr. Tony, talking about uh, digestive health. We'll see you then. Thank, Thank you, Dave. Bye. Bye. Okay.